Sundays. There has been for a long time a subject called personal social education or PSHE, but has a focus on the individual. What happens if I take drugs? Citizenship would ask the question, what are the implications for society about the use of drugs? And what laws might we have? So it's about moving away from the personal to the societal, from the me to the community. Drugs education is just one of the many elements of a citizenship curriculum that's proving a challenge for many teachers and schools. There are no experts of citizenship. There are people who are better at it, but we have to train our teachers, our specialist teachers, in delivering citizenship. Where citizenship is taught as a discrete subject, there is some excellent practice, but there is an awful lot of practice that is not as good. And indeed, Ofsted commented on that in January of this year, declaring it the worst taught subject. Within citizenship, there are some very delicate issues. Um, which need to be handled by somebody who is trained. Um, and although we're trained to a certain extent, I don't think to the level that our children need. Because of these difficulties, schools are being encouraged to work with outside organisations to deliver effective and relevant citizenship education. <laughs> If your aim is active citizens, then it can't simply be down to teachers and young people to work together. We need to look at other community partners. Young people need to be exploring and meeting with those themes in real life. Teachers should not feel isolated. They need to recognise that this isn't a burden they carry alone. Clifton School in Rotherham has enlisted the help of a national charity, Prison Me No Way, to deliver a Crime and Safety Awareness Day to Year 8. The prison service work alongside other local public services to provide a series of workshops to the pupils throughout the day. This programme takes a look at how Clifton School has tried to make the most of the services offered by these outside organisations. Hey, good morning, Year 8. <clears throat> I'm actually a prison officer. I come from the real world. I'm not an extra from bad girls. Today is about crime, the consequences of crime, the impact of crime on the victims, and how crime affects your community. You all have a role to play at certain times. In fact, it starts the minute you leave this hall. You will be treated like prisoners, because in prison, they do as we tell them. 8-8, eight, eight, you are H-wing. Line up in twos outside the hall, please. Quickly, come on! Don't talk about it, just do it! The prison service draws on personal experience to deliver the real facts about prison life to the pupils. When you come into prison, first thing we're going to do is take something off you, something which every single person in this school has got one, and it's not a mobile phone. Any suggestions? Yeah. Right. What's your name? Not in prison, it's not, because it comes down to XF5432. Everything we do about you then is with that. Now, this might not sound like a big deal to you, but it is the start of a process you're now going to go through whereby you are going to lose an awful lot of dignity. The prison service will provide you <coughs> with five pairs of Bridget Joneses. This is for you girls. These for the are... Oh, not for the fellas, yes, this yeah. is for the girls. All the clothing you wear in prison is communal. How many of you lads now wear other people's underwear? There you go. <laughs> there you go. But you've got a choice in that now. Come to prison. You don't. You don't have a choice. Right, shirts tucked in, everybody, before we go anywhere. No, don't fold them over, tuck them in. Quite simple. The last group were a disgrace. I can tell them three and four times. You can tuck them in, believe me. I want your hands out of your pockets, right? You've got to be quiet going along this corridor until so the workshop's on, right? We thought it was very important that young people actually learnt the true facts about the impact of crime, uh, so the impact of prison upon the person that's sent there. Keep the noise down. And actually taking them to see a real life, fully furnished prison cell. Come on, quick as you can. This is a typical cell in any prison in England or Wales. Obviously, it's made for two. So, this day, this purpose is this young man 
doesn't want to come out for his meals. Do you know why? Because he's got the diarrhoea. We've all had it, yeah, I've had it, yeah. You know the smell, you get the runs, you know what happens, right? You're not very well. Because once you come back for your meal, that door will be shut, and you would have to sit there, have your meal, while he's on the toilet. Oh, that's disgusting. Eh? That's, that's what happens. Did you see that on Bad Girls? Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. They get to go out and play a pool and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's about giving young people accurate information so that they can make a decision, an informed choice, uh, form their own opinion around what is provided through the session. You want to become a prisoner? No, to a man. Do you? No. Do you want to be a prisoner? I haven't got one prisoner yet. Two, three, four, five. The Crime and Safety Awareness Day also involves a role play workshop with the police and the prison service on the potential consequences of antisocial behaviour. Hands up if you think you've done something that is antisocial. OK, if you've spoken and talked in class when the teacher's talking, now put your hands up. If you turned up late for a lesson, put your hands up. Is there anybody in this room that hasn't got their hand up? Everyone commits some form of antisocial behaviour. In all the workshops, I think the message was, whatever action you take, there will be a consequence. It could be a good consequence, it could be a bad consequence. And the action that you take can affect your life for a long time to come. OK, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a role play. What you're going to see is some antisocial behaviour. Um, try not to get involved with the, the fighting, but certainly give, give the police a bit of abuse, you're drunk. I want you to look and see who is committing antisocial behaviour. And also to have a look and see if you could see who is breaking the law. And off we go. By doing interactive events through, for example, the street scene, the youngsters can actually engage and actually see for themselves the effect that type of behaviour has on a community. So, who do we think was to blame out of these two people? Hands up if you think it is this man who lives there. Hands up if you think it's the gobby lout. This man here, who lives at the house, he came out and he pushed the lad. That is an assault. It's an assault on a minor. If he goes to court, he could end up with a serious assault conviction because it's a young person. More importantly, he was drunk. What happens when the man pushes him off the wall and because he's drunk, he falls and he hits his head on the ground and sadly, he dies? What's going to happen to him? He is going to end up with a charge of manslaughter. He's going to end up in prison for a long, long time. And all he... They met people who were involved in the job. They were able to take part, so they role-played. So it gave them a chance to really be involved and not just be sitting behind the desk or not just be reading, but actually living it. Most people end up in prison because they make a bad choice. Hurting someone is a bad choice. All of you here are old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. We're not here to say to you what is right and what is wrong. And as we get older, we understand the consequences from things, so we make positive choices. And that's what today is all about. It's trying to make you think about making positive decisions. So what do schools need to think about when working with outside organisations, and how do you make it work? The challenges for schools in working with um, outside community partners are definitely uh, around time. How do we fit this in? How does it fit into the curriculum? You see, if you have a one-off day and that is never repeated, then where does that really lead? We're looking to relate what we learnt on that day to next year's programme, just to take from the day the ideas and the techniques and try and develop it into the next year so we don't lose what we benefited from on that day. The best thing you can do as a teacher to get the most out of it for yourself and for your class is to go along and just partake almost as one of the children. Actually be a part of it. Join in, do what they're doing. By having the teachers go around with the pupils and experience the day, then they're learning as they go along. So in many ways, it's also like an in-service day. 
an active in service day, they're getting hands on knowledge they can then take away and use in their classes. There are many other community organisations involved on the day and they're all prepared to share their specialist knowledge with the pupils. Like Rotherham Youth Offending Service. Some of the questions that we put them to them today are the ones where there's quite a bit of confusion uh, regarding legislation, where these young people stand in law and for the most part these are the areas that they're offending in initially. First one, if you look on your desk, you've got some cards, legal and not legal, okay? And what we want to do is find out what you know about what's legal and what's not legal. And don't worry about getting it right or wrong, because the reason you're here is to learn. Tracy is 14 years old and she's on her local park. And one of her friends comes over to her and gives her a split. Is that legal or not legal? Okay. Okay, right. The ones who held up not legal, you're all absolutely right. It's not legal to have a joint in a public place. If it comes across anyone under the age of 18 in a public place in possession of cannabis, it is automatically still an arrestable offence. The other thing that I'll definitely be doing with them is more work about drugs. Um, because the day showed that they weren't sure about things like the legal status of cannabis. And I think that that's also something very important and that's what we will be doing probably from now until the end of the summer. Yeah, and then we moved on to an exercise about peer pressure and about the legality and morality behind um, actions. Now, if you look around the room, I've got some posters up. We've got yes in that corner, maybe in this one, and then we've got no just at the back here. I'm going to read out something that you might do, and I want you to think about whether you would do it or not. You've got to be honest about why you're going to that corner, because we're going to ask you why. All right? If all your mates had new mobile phones and yours was really old and dated, would you tell the insurance company that your phone had been stolen just so you could get a new phone? By giving them this knowledge um, at this young age, hopefully it will prevent them from doing something that they didn't realise they were breaking the law. OK, right. So a good mix there. OK. Firstly, I must thank you for keeping me in work. All right. <laughs> But now I'd like you to explain, why would you do that then? Why do you think your friends would react? Laughing and all that, and oh, you got to and they've got all new ones. So, just do it. That was something as a teacher that I found very interesting, were the sorts of things that, that children tend to think are OK to do, which aren't. And there were some things that surprised me that they could potentially get into trouble for and not even know what they were doing. Tell me something that you've learned today. I don't want to be on my last one, so don't want him coming around to me out. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm quite friendly, I haven't bit you yet, have I? <laughs> there are lots of NGOs out there who want to work with schools. They may well be evangelists for their own particular issues, but they are not insensitive to the way in which the school curriculum works. And they are starting to have a dialogue with teachers about how both can mutually gain. But it's about a partnership. It's about a partnership between schools and NGOs, like the No Way Trust, that lead to a very, very effective learning experience and a high-quality day for young people and teachers alike.